It's time for a fumble action replay. This is a game that I played the other night against Hudson. This was actually a first match of the second season. Um, well, not the second season. It's sort of the first. It doesn't matter. It's a season following on from the last season. And Gary's um, Hudson's Dwarfs won the last season. And uh, my, but my Amazons beat him in the last um, game of the last season. So this is very much a, a rematch. So all I'm going to do is rattle through the game at a sort of advanced speed. Um, he's So I've got a wizard and a babe because... Um, He's got 200k reducements over me, partly because of this big fella here. He's got a death roller. Um, various skills I've got. So I've got guard uh, blitzer there. I've got a guard tackle blitzer, which is obviously slightly useless against dwarfs. Um, and a frenzy mighty blow blitzer. And then just a scattering of other skills. Move seven block um, person down there. Um, he's got a few interesting plays. He's got strength four troll slayer uh, with dodge. Um, who's a bit of a pain to to you know, deal with if he ends up in the in the wrong place. <clears throat> get the ref. Now get the ref was a horrible pain um because it means that he gets a free bribe and so um if he doesn't foul with the death roller it means that he can have the death roller for another drive afterwards um especially as he's got the 12 players there. Um so I'm not very likely to get lots of dwarfs off the pitch. I suppose I need to get one injured dwarf for him to have the second drive. But anyway, I'm kicking, and there is a death roller on the pitch. Um, so all that happens in the first turn, nothing very much, just a bit of punching. Now, what, what's quite nice is that my Amazons do um, make it through the first turn without anyone leaving the pitch, I don't think, or does someone leave the pitch? No, no one leaves the pitch in the first turn, which is a blessed relief. Now, at this point, and <laughs> I actually did this last time as well, I actually thought about using the wizard immediately, um, just because there's only one dwarf in the backfield, um, and it would have been quite cool just to um, lightning bolt the dwarf um, and then just see what happens after that, especially if the dwarf got injured, which is reasonably likely with the wizard, uh, with the lightning bolt. Um, but I, I held off. and the, So lots of this drive is about actually how you use the wizard and choosing the optimum time to, to do it. Um, so we're just um, so he's going to sort of... Ah, so he's pushed to go off the pitch there. Yes, yeah, so that was a little bit of a mistake by me. Um, so if we just zoom back a little bit, um, so where did I leave? So I, yeah, I left him too close. To be honest, I thought the troll slayers were quite a long way away. I didn't really count. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. So he was just, even though they were quite far enough, they were quite a long way away. I didn't actually do any counting, which was a mistake. So I left my, uh, I left my lovely dazzler blitzer there, um, ready to be surfed. And and you know Hudson likes likes a bit of surfing so he took the opportunity fair play to him I'm um, just went into reserves but not not ideal being off the pitch so then um, so then again I thought about using the wizards a nice collection of dwarfs over here um, but sort of still held off again um, yeah and then I'm just sort of trying to put a bit of pressure on the ball carrier. It is it is quite a nice idea to have just put a tackle zone on the ball carrier. It sort of forces the blitz usually. Um, it means that he can't sort of do tactical advancing using the blitz because he has to use the blitz to get the player away. And again, he's going for another surf, um, which he managed, which is a bit of a pain. Um, and Zoe got knocked out. So a little bit more punching. And at this point, I use the fireball. And nothing happened, which is a bit disappointing. You can see down here, Kadrin escapes the spell effect, Dunram escapes, and Kraz escapes the spell effect. So my fireball, which I thought was quite a good night time to use it, my um, thrower was looming, so it could have been perfect. If all three had been taken down, then I could have easily have gone in there. And I did, as well as that, I did have a couple of these guys. Even if one or two of them had gone down, then I should have been able to get over there and do something useful. But as it was, fireball gone. And I was a little bit worried at this stage that it might all go um, pear-shaped. So let's see what happens. Um, so the dodges do work, still putting a little bit of pressure on the ball carrier. Um, it's a, oh right, so that would have been good. So that was the, that was lining up for the one dice blitz on the ball carrier. So I sort of cancelled these tackle zones. And this is a bit of a risk because if the blitz is risky, then by cancelling the tackle zones, I've just left them as punching targets as well. Um, so when that dodge failed there, um, coming in for the one dice blitz because um, neither of these guys have got guard. Um, yeah, left me a bit exposed really, and it could all go wrong at this stage. So let's see what happens. 
It's a little bit of punching, but I'm, I, you know, the armor and the and the dodge is, is holding up. Um, so what he's done there is just run the he's just run the runner forward, but he hasn't. He's not actually going to put him into very much safety. He's just going to rely on sort of dodging, failing, or something. So I've managed to get a tackle zone on the ball carrier. Um, I did need to. So I was dodging away from a tackle, so I didn't have the reroll for it. But now this one has got the reroll because he's a, she's only next to a troll slayer who hasn't got dodge. Um, so I'm just going to blitz out there, um, and then um, that runner's actually got dump off, but chose not to use it because there was no obviously no targets there. Um, so I got the got the power on the on the ball carrier. And then just a case of uh, shoring things up a little bit and getting getting as much support as we can back there, um, and hopefully hoping I don't get punched too much. So a certain amount of um, sort of dwarf coming back. There was a little sneaky dwarf dodge in there, um, just a three up dodge with the blitzer, which is which, you know all right, but that could have easily have gone wrong, and then I'd have been away. Uh, so. Um, What happened there? Let's just see where that turnover came from. I see just skipped forward quite a long way, I'm not quite sure why. Seems to be slower to go backwards. Ah, yeah, that's yeah, that's what happened. I thought this was strange here. Um, so, so I put quite a lot of pressure on. Ah, yes. So the the, I think I must have skipped forward. But the death roller jumped in there, and then um, the dwarf dodges out and picks something up there. So a bit cheeky with the short hands um, and looking reasonably safe now actually. So let's see what happens. So I blitz, I push back, and so that gives me another. Another block there. Gets the pow. And then I do a cheeky little foul. So this is where it all goes a bit strange. Um, it's just massively crowded around the ball and just oh, it's just a horrible mess of, of Amazons being surrounded. Um, and then something a bit crazy happens in a second. So let's have a look. Uh, still the dwarf turn. So yeah. So I'm in a bit of a pickle here, and so this is this is not recommended how to play, but it you know works out quite nicely. So just quick two dust block there, and that free, and then I'm going to come in and I'm going to blitz this guy, and pow him. That's a bit risky because this is the one with frenzy. So if I'd pushed, then it would have been bad. So the ball scatters out there, and I catch it. Now, completely stuffed at this point. Absolutely nothing you can do. So the only option you've really got is just to throw the ball away. So we're going to go for a pass action um, over to this person. So let's see what happens. I, I, so I fumbled it slightly ridiculously. So what happened there was I failed. So I needed a six to do the pass basically, and it was going to. If I didn't roll a six, it was going to be a fumble because I got five tackle zones on me. So it fumbled. Went to there, didn't catch it because that was a six as well. Went out, and then the crowd actually chucked it over to there, which was um, there must be a, an Amazon crowd going on because that was pretty um, spectacular. And then a lovely double skulls from the dwarfs. Um, so many, many good dices going on here. A knock down there, and then I'm just going to pick up the ball and uh, run away with it in a moment. Getting a catcher now. That's an interesting one. So what I did there was I put the catcher within scoring range in case I fail this pickup. Because if I fail the pickup before I put the catcher in scoring range, the next turn there's no chance of scoring. So the catcher was um, necessary. But then I made the pickup and just managed to run off. Um, no rerolls left at this stage. Um, um, no rerolls left, and so the, the people at the top are going to get smashed up basically. Um, so in a minute I'm going to need to go for it to score. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then need to go for it. But in the meantime, they're just going to clear the pitch and just see what happens. But actually, again, in reserve, quite nice. She's going off as well. And but again, in reserve again. So they, so there's really good, quite lucky dice going on here. Now what happened there 
which I think there was a bit of an error by uh, Hudson on this road. He fouled with the death roller and got sent off, which meant he had to, um, well, he didn't use the bribe um, because then it would have been pointless because the death roller would have been sent off in a turn anyway. So I, I would have been really tempted not to foul at that stage and then had the death roller for the second drive. Um, so here's the go for it. Two, three, four, five, six. Go for it. Score. Yay. So that's quite cool. So going in, um, one nil up because of the crowd, basically, and some really lucky dice. So let's zoom through a little bit. Um, so this is just a couple of turns of a uh, couple of turns of bashing. I um I squandered a quick snap there slightly in that I f I f just forgot to move a load of players forward, which gave me a whole load of blocks. So if we just rewind just a wee bit. Um, because when when he set up, he actually had these three dwarfs, one, two, three, one square back, and I could have got blocks on all of those. So it's, it swings and roundabouts, really, because I do have a frenzy player, and putting these three dwarfs here stops the sort of frenzy from being as effective, because the, fo the following up blocks um, are less likely to be two dice blocks still. And they may even be half dice blocks. Um, but when I got the quick snap, I should have moved this player forward, 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 and probably this player forward as well. Just charged the line, and then I could have taken out, in theory, six dwarfs would have been on the floor. And that would have put me in a very um, commanding position. But I forgot to do that for some reason. I was too excited about winning, basically. Um, that happens sometimes. But that's the psychological side of Blood Bowl. Um, so, yeah. There's the frenzy. Got the ball. Just going to make it safe. Um, what's the next interesting thing that happens? Uh, oh yeah, more <laughs> more crowd pushing. <laughs> yeah, should have spotted that one again. Whoops. Um, but now I've got a dwarf off the pitch, which is fantastic. So what's happened here is that he's got a load of players over this side. Now he's got one, two, three, four, five dwarves in the in the in the wide zone, um, and dwarves are slow. And so I'm going to make the most of the fact that he's got five dwarves in the top, which he did in order to do, to get this sort of crowd push, they got player off the pitch, um, but it does mean that the, the switch is fairly straightforward. Um, so I am leaving this corner of this cage open, in theory. There, there's, there's a certain amount of openness here actually, it's not, not a very solid cage. Yeah, smash there. Um, but there were no long beards handy to, to hit, so I'm just relying on Blodge slightly. So re-rolled a push into a skull. Um, never re-roll a push. Um, it's a great bit of advice there. He, this guy re-rolled the push into the skull, and um, and then he was stuffed, basically. So hopefully I, now I should be able to clear out this dwarf. And then, now I mean to do a handoff down here, but I clicked the wrong button, so I did a move action instead. And so I just had to hang out down there. Um, so the runner can in theory get to this um, Susanna down here. But again, gets away with it with the blodge. So, so yeah, not, not ideal. So all I'm going to do on my turn is just run forward and in theory blitz that dwarf backwards and then just run in and score. So it's like a <coughs> basically a three up with a reroll and make the score there. Okay, so that made it 2-0. And then the blitz happened. Hurrah! Um, and so at this stage, dwarfs are 2-0 down at turn 12 or so. There's no way back really. And then the blitz just made it everything a bit worse. So if we just zoom through the rest. Not sure anything else interesting happens really. Um, just makes a bit of a mess down here. Got the ball. I think a lucky pow comes up now. So there's a dodge and then a double pow. Ball scatters over here. Again, the crowd being lovely towards me. Free up this um, thrower. Ready to pick up the ball and run away with it.
Yep, so scored, made it 3-0. Um, there was no point in um, stalling out anymore because I'd have to set up on the line anyway because I, I kicked. So even if I'd scored in my turn 16, um, so I just gave, I just scored rather than trying any um, stalling. And then nothing very much happened after that. So yeah, good start to the season for the Amazons. Um, got one more skill up. I got a double on um, on one of my players, on a, on a standard lineman, so I took leader there. Um, just for the extra reroll, because rerolls are good fun. Um, and yeah, so good, good start to the season. So hopefully I'll be able to do a few more of these uh, sort of 10-minute recaps um, after each game, because they're quite a nice way of looking at a bit of analysis.